Good morning, boys and girls. Thank you for joining us again today. I hope you guys have had a good week. Things are starting starting to lighten up and get back to normal, so hopefully we will be able to see each other again soon. We have a really cool story today, a story about how God is always with us and how we can totally trust him. It's another story about Paul, and I'm excited to share it with you. But before we talk about it, we are going to worship. So I want you guys to stand up. I want you guys to sing, and I want you guys to dance. I want you to worship with us, and we'll see you right afterwards. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like
every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you All right, boys and girls, that was really good. I love worshiping. Okay, so we know Paul, right? We've been talking about him for a while. First he was Saul, 
he had that amazing encounter where he was blinded by the light and he turned into um, just a complete follower of Jesus and he just spread the gospel everywhere. And that's where our story picks up today. This is a story from Acts. And boys and girls, Paul is just on fire fire to spread the gospel. He is just talking to everybody. And what happens is that he starts to make the Roman leaders and the Jewish leaders really mad. And they put him in jail. And you're not going to believe this. He is in jail for two years for doing nothing, for spreading the gospel and talking about Jesus. And that's where our story picks up. Paul's in jail, he's pleading his case, and they decide that he needs to go and plead his case in front of Caesar. So they send him to Rome, and this um, Roman guard, Julius, is with him, and he takes him on a ship. And I want you guys to watch this video to see what happens, but it's crazy. And as you watch it, as you watch it when the storm is there, because I'm gonna tell you, there's gonna be a storm, a big storm, a huge storm. And I want you to think about and watch what Paul does. How does he act? How does he still follow God and still talk about God? Does he cower in fear? Does he stand boldly in his faith? So I want you guys to watch this video thinking about how is Paul's behavior during this completely turbulent time in this completely turbulent storm. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. adventures and travels led him to Jerusalem. There the Jewish leaders brought up false charges against him, and Paul was taken prisoner and sent to Caesarea to stand trial before King Agrippa. Although King Agrippa found that Paul had committed no crime, because he was a Roman citizen and had appealed to the Roman Emperor, Paul was sent to Rome. Under the watchful eyes of Julius, a Roman officer, Paul and a number of other prisoners boarded a large sailing ship that would carry them to many port cities on the long journey to Rome. Once aboard the ship, Paul was led on a winding journey that took him from Caesarea to Sidon to Myra to Nidus, and then around the island of Crete, where they docked at a place called Fair Havens. Getting to Fair Havens had been a long and difficult journey. Winter was approaching, bringing with it dangerous weather and sailing conditions. Paul pleaded with the sailors and officers to stay on Crete. Paul warned them, Continuing this journey will bring disaster to our ship, cargo, and our own lives. We should remain here. Despite Paul's warnings, the officer in charge was persuaded by the ship's captain to find a safer place on the island of Crete where they could spend the winter. Soon after they set sail, what was a gentle breeze turned into hurricane-force winds that blew their ship far off course and out into the open sea. The sailors tried to control the ship, but nothing they did could put them back on course. Exhausted, the sailors secured the ship as best as they could with ropes and then let the storm drive them wherever it pleased. For many days, the ship sailed on raging seas under the black skies of the storm that blotted out the sun and the stars. Exhausted and starving, everyone on board began to lose hope that they would survive this voyage. All except for Paul. Paul stood in front of the crew and passengers and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not left Crete. But take courage. God's angel came to me last night and said that the ship will be destroyed, but all of us will survive. Even though we will be shipwrecked, God will save us. Finally, after 14 nights of fear and misery, the sailors sensed that the ship was approaching land. By measuring the water's depth, the sailors were able to tell that they were getting closer. They dropped the ship's anchors, hoping that they would stop before crashing against the rocks. Some of the terrified sailors couldn't wait to get off the ship and onto dry land, 
so they lowered the lifeboat to the water while pretending to lower anchors. Paul told a Roman officer what was happening and warned, unless we all stay on this boat, you won't survive. Hearing this, the officer cut the lifeboat loose and it fell away. Before the sun came up the next day, Paul urged everyone to eat so they would have strength to survive the events that would take place that day. Everyone on board knew that their voyage would end with a shipwreck. Paul could see the fear and concern on their faces, so he offered them encouragement by reminding them that God said everyone on the ship would make it safely to shore. Paul then took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of the crew and passengers. He broke it into pieces and then began to eat. Everyone on board ate until they were full and they were strengthened and encouraged. At daylight, the sailors decided to run the ship aground. They cut away the anchors and aimed the ship for the beach. The ship slammed into a sandbar that was still a bit off the island shore. The ship wouldn't budge out of the sand, and the waves began to smash what was left of the ship into pieces. The Roman soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to stop them from swimming away and escaping. But one soldier, who wanted to spare Paul's life, stopped the others from carrying out their plan. Some prisoners jumped overboard and swam ashore, while others survived by clinging to broken pieces of ship. In the end, everyone made it safely ashore on the island of Malta. Girls, can you believe that story? Think about that story. How long did that storm last? They're, 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 they're in the middle of the sea and this storm is battering them. For how long? Do you guys remember? Two weeks, boys and girls. Two weeks. And what happened? How did Paul know that everybody would be safe? Do you remember? An angel talked to him in his dream, right? And boys and girls, when that happened, now now picture this. You're in a storm in the on a boat, and by the way, a lot of the people on the boat couldn't swim. Okay? So you're on this boat in the middle of a two-week storm, and you have a dream, and he says, nobody is going to perish. The boat, what's gonna happen to the boat? Is the boat gonna be okay? No, the boat's going to be destroyed, right? But nobody will perish. First of all, you're probably thinking, well, if the boat's destroyed, how is nobody going to perish? But it was true, right? God took them closer to land and he made it all true. And when he told Paul, when he gave Paul that dream, what did Paul do with it? He told everybody, right? So he took this completely scary, completely turbulent time and just continued to talk about how good God was and how we can trust God and how he knows God is real. And those people on the boat, I bet most of them didn't know Jesus. And they watched Paul stand in complete faith and say all these things. And boys and girls, do you think some of them probably started to believe in Jesus after that? I have to believe they did, boys and girls, right? Because everything Paul said came true. Every, I'm sorry, everything from that dream that the angel said came true, right? And boys and girls, I wanna, I wanna point out one other part to you. You remember the part where they were um, pretending to put anchors down and they were lowering the lifeboat because they were going to escape because those soldiers were only thinking about themselves? In that moment, Paul saw them and he had a choice. He had a choice to escape, right? But he chose to stay on the boat that he believed was gonna be destroyed and trust in God. Again, we see Paul trusting in God and not doing what, um, what everyone else might do or not doing what's easy. 
He stood firm in his belief and he continued to trust in God. Boys and girls, this story is about trusting in God. It is about believing in him and believing that his plans and his way is good and we can, we can trust him. He wants the best for us and we can always trust him. And boys and girls, that's what I want you to take away today. I want you to take away the fact that God is good. He loves you. I mean, how much he loves you is like, we can't even say it, it's so much. And he wants the best for us. And so we need to trust him even in those hard times. We always want to put our trust in Jesus. So as you go out this week and as you, you know, do things in the week, I want you to remember that. Just remember God is good and I'm going to trust him. And we will see you back here next week. Okay, boys and girls, I'll see you next week. And next week, we are going to talk about one of the letters that Paul wrote while he was in jail. And we're going to look at how he used this time um, to continue to spread the gospel while he was in jail. And now you are going to make a little shipwreck craft. So I've got a special helper here who's going to show you what to do. And I'll see you guys next week.